Okay, so welcome to this first class of the Human AI Interaction course that will see us for together for four hours with some breaks in the in the middle. Uh, I am Luigi De Russis, the first name here, and I will you will do with me half of this course, and the other half will be made by Alberto, that is um, an assistant professor here at Polytechnico. So let me start with three. Uh, let me start with three uh, disclaimers. Um, the first one, and that's why I, I told you you are too quiet. Um, the first one is that classes will likely be or mostly be interactive. That means that nobody here, including me, wants me speaking for four hours in a row. So you want me to stop speaking because I need to listen to you. And so I will ask questions and hopefully you will answer to this question. And so that it could be interactive also, the, the lecture, then there will be exercises and those exercises by definition will be interactive. But at least for the lectures like today, uh, it's, it's something that we, we will try to, to make it as much as interactive as possible. I will need to convey to you some information, some knowledge, and for some part there will be no real interaction in, in that, but for other parts I would like to listen to, to your ideas. And this brings to the second um, disclaimer, that is um, that there are, let's say, no wrong answer. So I will ask questions, you hopefully will share some ideas on those questions and then we will eventually come up with the right answer, if there is a right answer, but feel free to, to speak and even if you are not 100% sure, just share what you had in mind and then we will proceed from there. I can assure you that you will never remember who said something, so uh, it's not a problem. Uh, so feel free again to um, to make mistakes. Uh, well, maybe not in the exercise, but in in the questions for sure. And um, the third disclaimer is that going through the these slides, especially these slides and the next one, so next class, I will make some exaggerations on purpose. So we'll stress more things or take a side if there is a side to take, not just for the sake of exaggerating or to create more drama, but for make a point and make some provocation if needed in, in some reasonable way so that maybe you can, disclaimer number one, interact more and answer more and be more active during the, the lecture and not sleep for the entire duration of the class. Um, these are the three disclaimers I wanted to do. Um, another question is, do you know who is this charter here? Who doesn't know? Okay. Who, who want to tell them? Who is this one? So that everybody feel in the right class. Who is this person, this charter? Is Star Wars charter? That is, yeah, but is what? Android. An Android? Some more details on this? It's an Android, yeah, and without spoiling the, the movies, it's an Android, and what does the characteristic of this Android? Android? Does it speak? You don't like. It's like a human robot. It's like a human robot. Does it speak, right? Yeah. Interact with people. Interact with people. It has also emotions. It has also emotions. Sometimes it's annoying, but this is more on the movies. So yeah, this is from Star Wars. So it's basically in eight or seven out of nine movies, I think. Um, I don't remember exactly, I think that is, in almost all movies, in some 
level. Um, okay, this wasn't a question for actual question for the course, clearly. Um, so more question for you. So let's try a baseline. Let's set a baseline. So these are um, topic that we will not cover here. So if you are interested in understanding how to do any of this thing or how to build a fancy new AI model, that's not the right course, I'm sorry. Uh, but we will probably meet some of this term or we need some of this knowledge to understand things. And so let's try to go through this list. So what is? It's the the thing before each of these words. Do you know what is classification? Applying labels. Applying labels. Can we be a little bit more precise? Can we be a little bit more precise? Yeah, because applying labels. It is, but. divide groups in some small groups according to some characteristics, which is the output of, the, of a classification process. And can we make an, yes, clearly. Classification is a prediction of discrete, discrete variable and regression is not. Can we make an example of classification? Just a concrete example. I want to classify what and what I'm expecting the results to be. Like you have a sentiment amount of problems, so you have a tweet, a Twitter, something, and you want to say is this tweet positive or negative? So this is classification. Instead, you, if you want to know the probability of being positive or negative, in this case, that is a regression. Yes. So if you have something like a, a a tweet or an X, I don't know how it's called this day. Uh, so something for data from Twitter or X again. Uh, you want to understand if the emotion associated to that is positive or negative. That's a classification because it's discrete, either positive or negative. Uh, but also go on the physical world. If you want to understand if that is a chair or not, it's a classification problem, depending on your description of chairs, clearly. Um, yeah, clustering, we, we skip to say, he skipped the question number two, but we were in question number one, actually. So yeah, clustering instead. Grouping uh, elements of data based on how they uh, share similarities. Yeah, grouping elements in, a, in data, in a data set, based on some similarity. Whatever is similarity, it depends on the, the problem at end. Good. Third question. unsupervised versus supervised learning. Okay, so how many of you does AI in the research topic? Okay, so among these people, <laughs> the other are excused. What's the difference between unsupervised and supervised? So classification is supervised or unsupervised, typically. Supervised. And why supervised? Because someone assigned the label in the beginning, right, to the data sets and say, oh, these are positive tweets, like to, to follow up with the example of him. And these are negative emotions. So it's someone decide who are the classes where the new elements need to, to be. Uh, that's supervised because someone supervised the process. Uh, unsupervised instead would be the opposite. So? Yeah, you don't know exactly what are, you, you, don't, you don't have the classes, you cannot know what's the classes, so you have some algorithm that try to put together information in a way 
that are similar and so they are adding this if you want to do something about labeling they are doing this uh, ontology that's more probably tricky It's related to the semantic web, for sure. So while the first three questions were about machine learning, why they define, the fourth one, ontology. Ontology is a way to represent knowledge. So it's not machine learning, per se, but it's, it's, it's an umbrella term. Under AI, it's an umbrella. AI, we can consider here AI as an umbrella term that includes many things, including ontology. Ontology are knowledge representation, way to represent knowledge created by humans typically. So an expert say what is a specific object and this information is decoded in a machine readable uh, document that is uh, an ontology and it has properties and it's mathematically verified and you can do logical in in interfer inference on those properties. So let's, let's make an example among these and um, the classification that we, we mentioned before, but not with um, emotion because it's too complex. Uh, let's use the example of a chair. So if you want to classify, if you want to build a classifier that tell you if something, a picture, is includes a chair or not, what you are going to do? Keep it simple. If you want to do it with a classification. Classification first. So what do you need? You start from scratch. You don't have internet access, so you cannot cannot download data set. So what do you need to do? Take picture of chairs. So go to IKEA and take picture of all the chairs they have, and also of non chairs, right? Because you need positive and negative um, element to say this is a chair and this is not. Then. I, could, I go to Ikea and make a lot of pictures, then. Split it in what is a chair, what is not a chair, then. Yeah. Start identifying some features of the chair in the picture, for what? To give this information to what? To make a, a description of uh, the, the, the tag that I have to give them after. Mm -hmm. So this information is given to, to which entity? To, to a person? I, you described to me with the chair or to, to something else? Algorithm. To an algorithm. So that it will be the model of what is a chair according to the picture that uh, you received. And then you train, you validate all the stuff, and then if you want to see if it's working, what do you, you do? You, test well with them. you get another picture and you give it to the algorithm and it will say with a certain percentage if this is a chair or not. Um, and this percentage will depend on the algorithm that you, you used and also of the data that you provided, hmm? the quality of data, the feature you selected, or the feature that the algorithm selected, etc. So this is classification, right? So how would you describe instead, how do you represent a chair in an ontology to you? We said it's something that the human describe. How would you describe a chair? So, a chair is something that has attributes, a color, a shape, then? Hmm? A function, uh, yeah, you can sit on, then? It's something inanimate, then? It has legs, right, at least two. Um, uh, at least two legs. Uh, if it has one leg, 
is probably not a chair. So it's a description. You describe a prototype of a chair so that from the description you can say, um, you can reason, given another object with some of this property, you can ask the ontology, is this a chair? And the ontology will likely say yes or no, but not according to some probability or according to data that I've seen, but according to how you describe the two objects. Um, and the relationship with them, including the action. So if I can see it on, then is, in our description, a chair. Uh, but if we say that also a table is something you can sit on, then it's not enough that information to discriminate between a chair and a table, because you can also sit on a table, let's say. Okay? So again, this is just to uh, set a baseline and give the idea that AI is actually more than, well, not give the idea, but to reinforce the idea that AI is actually more than just than machine learning, deep learning, etc. It has other component, including, for instance, knowledge representation. Um, cold start problem. Do you know what is the cold start problem? Any of you working with recommender system? No. Yes, so let's, let's make a little bit shorter for, for the recording especially. Um, the cold start problem is a problem that exists in, is, is not solved, uh, algorithmically is not solved as a problem, that exists in a recommender system that say that when you start, you, and you don't have enough data, you don't have enough history, what you are going to recommend. So imagine you go on Netflix for the first time, new account, never been on Netflix before, which are the movies that Netflix will recommend to you? There are different strategies. There are different strategies to tackle the problem, but the problem still exists. So the algorithm or recommendation algorithm doesn't know what to recommend because it doesn't know your viewing history. And so there are these strategies to minimize this problem, to tackle this problem. One is using ontologies, so provide some knowledge representation to that. But others are, for instance, what Netflix do. If you remember when you, if you sign up on Netflix recently or remember, for instance. Ask, uh, for us, uh, taste of uh, TV. Or, yeah. Or propose the it has something on screen, like what's your perf preferred genre or do you, uh, do, you rate, do you like any of these movies or do you like any of these actors? So it is get some data to start at least with the recommendation, with the idea at the beginning, the recommendation will be not so good, but then as more use the service, the recommendation will be more accurate. And this is again a, a problem that's not algorithmically solved. It can be minimized and there will be strategies like this one to partially overcome it. Um, but notice that these properties, that is, um, these things are not solved by a computer, right? So who is that say these are the movies I prefer? The user. A person, exactly. So it's not something that data solve, but it's need interact input from, from people. Uh, precision or recall. We will meet them at a certain point, just a term. So what they are. Mm, they are metrics for checking the, the quality, can we say, of the algorithm? Doesn't think a better word right now. Um, so precision, as the word say, is how precise the, the output is with respect to what you expect for, for instance. Um, okay, well, expert system, do you know what is expert system? It's part of AI, is not so common nowadays, but still part of AI. Our system uh, that are very, very good in doing one thing, and typically with some knowledge behind them, 
and or some rule-based mechanism to produce an output. So it's not, again, it's not machine learning, it's not knowledge representation, are a specific way of system that expert in doing something very, very specific with some specific mechanism like rules, trigger action rules, or uh, event condition action rules. So if, if something happened, then do something else, etc. For very specific um, and bounded problem. Okay, so this is a baseline. Um, so you were saying that you were doing um, AI in research. How many of you followed an AI course of any type? So this is a subset of people that do AI in, in the research. That's interesting. Um, and the others. How do you interact? With, why do you, are you interested in AI if you are? Yeah, and it's a product that maybe use AI on, on its own, but you need to, you don't need to uh, edit or change the AI to just, just done and things. good. Uh, yes, uh, another question that I forgot before, but uh, I can ask here now, it's before we go over with this. Um, so again, this will be four hour, will not be four hour entirely of introduction and fundamentals for so sort of preview and trailer of the of the course um, what's are your expectation on this course so why are you here it's not it's a dramatic question right i'm working on my human machine interaction for vehicles and automotive so i guess that uh, once i've made the vehicles the it's linked to link to your research uh, specifically. So understand more since you're already working with something that is related to Dan. Yeah, uh, also for me, because uh, I'm working with AI, so they do my AI interaction faster. It is. <laughs> In a way, yes. And expect these are okay. While you're here because of the research, mostly uh, expectation. What you expect to to know at the end of the course is that. So we can see if it's right expectation or not. You will also see if your expectation will be met or not. new strategies, new ideas, new tool to maybe to apply. So understanding uh, the different types of interaction that are possible with a different kind of AI, okay. Yes. Try to understand the human parameter in an algorithm system is a definition I like. I will make a note of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then, <laughs> for the human parameter especially, then other expectation. Yes. Um, I expect to learn more, more about uh, AI and how it can interact with my uh, field of research um, because I focus on a, a big discipline that's called the space architecture. So it's a, a kind of a new uh, field and uh, um, I think uh, it's interesting to learn. Yeah, yeah, to understand if there is something that can combine. Uh, one more. 
and then we proceed. Learning how to keep uh, in mind the person, the people when um, you're working in AI. Good. So I, I could say that more or less the expectation will be covered. Um, so the idea of the course is give you, there's a preview actually, it's a preview of the preview. Um, so the idea of the course is to give you some knowledge and conceptual knowledge, conceptual tools to, to do the things you, you said, but also some practical tools to design and evaluate human AI systems hmm, later on the course, uh, not today, clearly. And so that you have the conceptual knowledge, the idea of what's going on, and also the, um, some tools, hmm, some practical tools, not computer science tool, not algorithm, but some tools you can apply to say, okay, this is a good indication of what's going on or not, and some good um, way or I'm doing it in a good path or, or not. Um, one more thing to say before proceeding, so how I would like to, to structure these four hours. Uh, I would like to have a break every hour, more or less, short break, just even if it's introductory, interactive, it's still you're sitting there for four hours. It's not very nice. Um, so that's one. The second thing so we are going through this. We will, before, after one, before one of these breaks, we will do the madness session for which I hope you all here add a slide ready, otherwise do it. Um, and then we will um, speak again about fundamentals and in, for, before closing, a few information about the things you have to do for the next class, because you will have one thing to do for the next class. And so a few, like 10, 15 minutes on that topic, and that's enough for today, okay? Just to, to give the plan. So. Let's go back to, to, to AI and to an introduction. So AI is everywhere. It's everywhere in the research, but it's also everywhere in daily life. Uh, so just, again, just to, to speak about, do you know what these things are? Some of them at least. So like, let's start in order. What is, what is this one? It's an Amazon Echo. That's why is AI? It's a conversational agent. It's a conversational agent. It allows you to interact with So you can speak with that thing and hopefully you get an answer that is appropriate to the question you made. This other thing. It's a Google Assistant, so the, the more or less the same thing as before, but just in a different box. Um, this one. I don't know if you, if you have seen this one. If you have a Mac, you can have access to this one. If you don't. This is a tool for novices um, to create. This is called Create ML, and it's a tool to create machine learning models. So you, you drag and drop images and you set some parameter and give you uh, in a drag and drop way, easy, to, to, easy to, to work, way a model that then you can use in iOS application, Mac application, etc. And so it's something in the, um, uh, in the toolkit that you can have if you're creating some of this. This one, the reddish one, I have no idea exactly what it is, but what can be the domain? Yeah, it's some bioimage classification. There is some grade uh, indicated there, so probably something that say this is more dangerous or this is more uh, it's more a problem than, than something about medicine or bio. Um, by engineering and something like that. And finally, this one. This is a car, right? Okay. This is an autonomous drive car, yes. And is this like a 
as act, an actual autonomous drive car to you or is something that you just drive for experiment? It's an active service in the US. So this is a picture from Pittsburgh. Uh, but um, so when, when, if you are there, you can call an Uber. You can call an Uber with a human driver or with a non-human driver. Uh, and, and it will bring you in the city. This is not going outside the city, clearly. Well, not clearly, but it's not going outside the city. So all, all of this is part of where AI is uh, everywhere. And we can say that when it works, it's actually great, right? So if we have all the, the Alexa or Google Assistant, we have something, we get the right answer, it's actually nice and good. Um, and when it fails instead, it does it either spectacularly or in a very nice, in a way. And here we have two examples. Let's start from the newest one. That is, what is this? It's written. What is this? Chat GPT. What's wrong here? So I ask what is 3 multiplied 4 plus 9 multiplied 9, give the answer first and then explanation, because I wanted to see the explanation, but the answer was, was enough. And say that the answer is 87, and the explanation is that it does 3 multiplied 4, that is 12, and 9 9 that is 81 and 12 plus 81 clearly does 87 right no okay it doesn't look right to me either um, so what's the problem here well the answer is wrong yes um, why it's it's a problem that the answer is wrong. Because if it gets wrong something in the small URL, can it get wrong something uh, important? Because if, if you get wrong something that is small, it can get wrong something that is important. So why this is wrong? You have to know the, the right answer. You need, you need the right answer to establish this is wrong. And also it say that in a, let's say, confident way. Right? It's not... I guess that the answer is 87, but the answer is, and this is the explanation, and I prove you that the answer is 87, when actually it's not, right? Um, so, and actually, if you ask them, are you sure? Uh, the answer is, oops, I made it wrong. The answer is 93. So it corrected the second round. But first, so if you are um, elementary, primary school children and use this for solving your maths, um, homework, you will likely get uh, a wrong answer mm? uh, and without noticing because you don't have the knowledge to say that 12 plus 81 is 87, you're learning that stuff. Um, so th there are work to do. So ChatGPT is a nice piece of technology as a large language model, right? It's not uh, something very, very simple. It's actually well done, etc. But on some topic, like math, it makes mistakes and it confidently makes mistakes. And why? Do you know why it is not able to do math? Or this kind of math? Yes, exactly. So this, so ChatGPT is a large language model, as the name say, is about language, right? So Italian, English, Chinese, whatever languages. So what the a large language model does, very simply, as he said, is to, to try to understand if, given an input, there is some token, some words that is coherent with that input and provide that as an answer. So he's not really doing the operation. It's not doing, doing any mathematical operation, it's got information from some data that it has uh, from the past and put together information in a coherent way 
and print out the results. So in this case, in, there were some indication that after 12 plus 81, there will be 87 for whatever reason. We, we don't know the reason, but it's not doing actual mathematics because otherwise it will be able to, to clearly do this operation that any calculator without the need of AI is able to, to do, right? Um, so it's confident and, and, and this can be a trouble. And then uh, we will see that, but we, we can um, just anticipate this. Um, I can tell you that typically people have a good level of trust with this kind of technologies. Why? To you. Because it seems like a human. You can write to him in your language. So you, by default, expect the other to reply correctly like a human. So that set already a base of trust that is high, much higher than the trust that you can have for this thing here. So every chat-like system, by default, have a higher level of trust with respect to others, because you can speak with them, you can write to them naturally. Hmm? Uh, and then there is this other example of, this is more, let's say, spectacular. Um, so what is this? The, the car? It's a Tesla. And where is a Tesla here? So here there is the street, right? Here in front there is a street, and this is not street, I guess, this is a grass. And the Tesla where is? On the grass. Um, and it, that was driving alone, so it's not the person that jumped on the grass. Uh, this is an example, and there is a video, I open it, we can see a little bit, of the smart summon of Tesla. Do you know what is the smart summon of Tesla? The smart sum of Tesla is a technology that they introduced via a software upgrade in 2019. And the idea is that you park your car somewhere, you go shopping somewhere else, um, and then you go out of the shopping center, you through the app, you call your Tesla to come to you. So this that doesn't go around in the city, just moving from the parking lot to where you are. And this is clearly AI related. It's much of operation, it's much of input and decision and driving, etc. Um, so let's have a look at this video. And this worked very badly, or at least it worked. Uh, so this was a video of um, 2019, 2020. Uh, so one of the first iteration of the, of the smart summon. Um, let me remove the audio car let's uh see how well it comes to me all right so we're right here doesn't matter so um it's called the car to the application and the car is over there so it's move then go there and it's stuck and then try to go back And try again, same path of before, and stop. And etc. The car doesn't really reach the person. At a certain point, it go, the car goes on the, on, on the street, on the right street here, but on the wrong direction. Because the person is this side, not that way. So why is and so the person stopped it. And, and he made uh, quite a lot of exper experiment in these videos in different places, said maybe that was a bad position, let's try another place. And um, so the car is always over there, and it's moving, and it's almost crashing against a car. But it stopped, clearly. Um, and, and there was space behind that to, to move around, it's not that. Uh, stop there and you, you need to, to go there. And, and there are many of these, of these examples, right? Um, so again, what's the... So this is probably easier because it's just in front.
should be easier. Because it just needed to go straight. So what's what's the problem? Yes. Could be many things, including precision of the GPS of the person on the phone. So clearly, Tesla, the factory people working on Tesla, test it right before doing a deploy, a worldwide deploy, or even a US-based deploy. And so they tested it, they try it, and uh, where they are is not um, something that they just throw out like this. But in this video, but also other videos, uh, you see that this is actually not really working. Well, quite often it's not working. So yes, it could be precision of the GPS of the person. It could be light. It could be shadows. It could be weather. It's, here it's not raining, but imagine if it was raining. That is probably one moment when you would like this to work very well, because it's raining. I don't want to go to the car while raining. I prefer the car to come to me. Um, so it could be a lot of reasons from a um, technical perspective. Um, but why these made videos? Well, because it's sort of fun if you continue this. It's just a four minutes video, but it has many experiment. Um, so what's, let's say, the problem, why People create video because it's not working, but why? Because the system doesn't behave expected. So the problem is the expectation, setting the right expectation. And so here, the right the expectation that Tesla set was press this button and the car will come to you. As simple as that. You just have a big button on the user interface, you press it and the car will reach you wherever you are, quickly, as quickly as possible, without incident, accident, except it's not. So in this case, it's a wrong expectation made by, um, by the car maker. And this is another example of this Tesla Summon. At a certain point, decided that the street and the grass are the same thing and just go through the grass and then was stuck there and the person needed to go there and push the car to go back on the street. Otherwise, it was fixed there and you cannot move it. So in one case, we have failure, maybe due to some too much new technology. In some cases, it's about expectation. And in this other case, it's about confidence. And it's about trust. And again, setting the right, in a way, expectation. Uh, and these are nice thing, right? Nobody's hurt. At, at, at maximum, you get more visualization on YouTube if you have a Tesla somewhere is not working. Or you can say, oh, ChatGPT is not accurate. And that's it. But does really damage or create problems per se. But in other case, it's also very problematic. So look at this example here. Uh, the first one say IBM, IBM. So not the bakery at the end of the street. IBM uh, boasted that its AI could outthink cancer. No more cancer because IBM said that through AI. Wonderful. Uh, and this was, I think, six years ago. And I think we didn't outthink cancer yet, uh, unfortunately. Uh, others say the computer system that read X ray will make radiologists obsolete. Again, six years ago, this sentence was made, and we still have radiologists because it's not working as a radiologist is working. Um, system developed in one hospital often flop when deployed in a different facility, in a different hospital. Um, software using the care of millions of Americans, in this case, has been shown to discriminate against minorities. And AI systems sometimes learn to make predictions based on factors that have less to do with the disease in, uh, in medicine uh, than the brand of the, the machine used, the time of blood test is taken, or whether a patient was visited by a chaplain. Um, 
So let's make this, let's take this as an example. So the, the first sentence, system developed in one hospital often flop when deployed in a different facility. I will make you a concrete example that is linked in this, uh, in the source where it took these sentences. Uh, there was a X-ray system to detect, I don't remember what, um, something with the, the upper part of the body that was deployed in an hospital and tested and created in an hospital. And in that hospital worked very well, very high precision, um, very confident. Basically it was saying more or less what the doctor was saying. So the company, the, the researcher, the company was very happy because it works, wonderful. And so what they did, they take the system, the AI system, from one hospital and bring it to another hospital to do the same kind of analysis on the same kind of, let's say, X-ray. And that hospital, it just basically not work at all, just randomly. Why? It's not a configuration problem. It was the same software, just same model, broke in another place, with clearly different people, different patients, different machines around, but pick an image and give a classification. This is some kind of disease or not, with a certain percentage of confidence. In one hospital worked very well, in the other one was terrible. Maybe a problem? Like? Can you make an example of this different input? Or is it just more concrete? Uh, I don't know, this is a picture uh, with um, the first hospi hospital may provide it uh, with uh, a scheme of colors mm. and the second one for example. With another scheme of colors. So you say the first hospital you get this picture with some characteristic of the picture like colors or luminosity or whatever and the other one with a different level of colors, scheme of colors or luminosity, something like that. Yeah. That was not the case, it's closer but it's not the case. What's about the position of the patient on the bed? Position of the patient on the bed, um, um, more or less, this was happened. Yes, doctors made it uh, differently. Uh, well, different hours in this case doesn't matter, but there are examples like here. Uh, the time a blood test is taken is significant. It's the way for the algorithm to, dis to discriminate if it's one thing or the other. Just the time basically makes no sense, but the algorithm learned about the time. Uh, so in this case, what was the problem? So you, you, the three answer, let's put together the three answer you get because together probably they are more or less right. So what happens in the first hospital was that um, they used, uh, so there was a lot of elderly people, uh, bedridden, so in bed. And so the doctor took a portable X-ray machine and used it on the patient to get the X-ray of the chest. That gave the images slightly different from normal x-ray, not in terms of colors, etc., but just in terms of how you position because it's, mobile, it's mob mobile, it's portable. So you have to put it on the patient that is on the bed, so horizontal. And it worked well in that case because all that people happened in a certain time, it was old elderly, old bedridden, etc. In the other hospital, they didn't have so much elderly people to test for that condition. And, and so people moved to the X-ray machine and stand still in front of the X-ray machine. So this difference between being bedridden with the X-ray portable machine and being stand still in front of an X-ray machine that still gets the same part of the body, 
made a difference so big that in one case the algorithm works well and in the other case the algorithm was a disaster and they clearly needed they clearly stopped to use it because it makes no sense to, to use it so just this difference so technically was good it's not a problem of colors etc but the way people inputted the images or the way the creator of this system forgot to check which are the assumptions, which are the practices of people, how doctors use that technology made a huge difference between a success and a total failure of the, of the machine. Um, so, a possible reason of this is clearly the typical approach that uh, is, is given if we think about machine learning specifically to build this kind of system. And this is the typical approach. It's not always like that, but it's the typical approach. So which are the elements when you want to, be, we said that already, which are the elements that you use when you want to build, like in the X-ray case or in the sentiment analysis or in the chair case, what, which are the elements you use? You need data, like tweets, as we said before, picture of chairs, x-ray pictures, etc. Then, so you prepare the data, etc. Then you need a certain point, you need to test that your repository, you need to run your system, and so you need samples, instances, samples of the data, new sample of the data, if you want, if you are validating, maybe a subset of, of this data here, but still different input, different instances. And you have something in the middle that picks data and instances, that's here is written AI, mag AI, AI magic. It's not actually magic, right? It's, it's some algorithm that you choose, um, but do you really know or understand in most of the case 100% what's going on there? That's why we have explainable AI, but otherwise we won't. Um, but if you don't think about explainable AI, do you know what's going on here in this black box? Really? No. You get some data, you get some instances, and you get some result. And you say, okay, yeah, the results are good or, or not. And then if they're not, we tweak data or we change some parameter here in this, uh, in this black box. And when we are satisfied with the results, we said we have done. Hmm? And, and a lot of, if you, if you read any machine learning paper, a lot of, maybe not a lot, but a certain amount of that, um, try to, for reasons, to improve the results or the process. Like my algorithm is 3% faster, better, precise, etc., than the previous version, than state of the art, etc. So this is the typical approach. Do you agree that this is more or less a typical approach? Then you can have validation, etc., but still related to this. What's missing here? So if I do a, if I teach a machine learning course, I say, okay, in this course we, I'm not, but I could say in this course, we are going to, um, to follow this process. We're going to get data. We're going to analyze data. We're going to clean data. And then we're going to select some algorithm and understand which is the best for, for the operation we want to, to do. So we want to do classification. Then we need a certain type of data. And if we want to do regression, we need another probably kind of data and different algorithm and then we give some instances and then I will teach you how to do validation testing etc and then precision recall uh, the things we said that and see the results right that could be a three second summary of a machine learning course base machine learning course more or less 
Yes. Thanks for the validation. Um, what's missing here? The human in the loop. The human somewhere. Yes. Where, where, where people are here? Everywhere. Everywhere. Exactly. Human are everywhere in this process, basically. In some cases, are the source of data. If you are doing it in Twitter for sentimental analysis, I'm just using that example, but not because. <laughs> if you do it on Twitter on X for sentimental analysis, it's actually data that came from people in their daily life. It's not atmospheric data, right? Um, so there are actually everywhere. And you said, so a question for those who followed a machine learning course before, just a classical machine learning course, like one, the longer version, way longer version of this. How many times in that course, human, person, people were mentioned? You can pick a number between zero and one, probably, and... I've seen it only at, at the end, when you make a prediction, and you usually want to test, when you deploy your model, you need an expert that is working with your system before leaving the system alone. So... Uh, so once. That's a good progress because two years ago and four years ago, when I asked the same question, the answer was zero. So now we're, we move to one, that is a progress. Uh, but actually, we, see, yes. Doesn't the supervision imply the human presence? The supervisor? Yes, but not that necessarily everything is supervised, but a part of that, um, How many cases there are of supervised system that discriminate against some people? There are. There are. No? There are. Especially minorities, etc. Or accents. If you are doing something like Alexa, Alexa is known to not understand specific accent in English. So, yeah, there is a supervised process, but who gets the data? was said to who get the data that you have to think about these other factors and not just about having one million samples or picking the best label or how to clean up data. No. Basically, typically no. Um, so, again, where, where we put ourselves. We, again, we are not going to look inside this AI magic here, but we try to understand how we can involve people in the other uh, moments, um, especially for what concern this interaction between humans and AI that is different from the interaction between humans and any other piece of technology that is not based on AI. So some of these things came from a broader field that is human computer interaction, because there are methods that can came and can be used also here, AI or not AI involved, but something is specific for AI based system. So we are going to, to explore this. Uh, this is basically what we, we discussed. Uh, and this is just a summary of what we said everywhere. So system, AI system are designed by humans uh, to solve problems framed by humans. Uh, an AI system doesn't care about sentiment analysis per se. It's a problem that we want to focus on. Um, with humans taking a specific choice, which algorithm to use, which data to use, how to analyze data, how to pick data. Uh, evaluated, tested by human, what he was saying at the end, with an outcome for humans often, not always, but often, 
and sometimes also presented to humans with some kind of user interface, just some graphical or vocal uh, examples. Um, so we are not going again into the black box uh, there because algorithms are not always the answer of how we can solve um, this kind of issues, how can we include people, how can we solve discrimination in data, etc. Um, and in some cases, like the cold start problem, is something that algorithmically cannot be solved, and how it solves, as we said before, which strategies that ask people, give me some information that I don't have. Hmm? So we are putting people knowledge in, within the system so that there could be a starting. Um, and here there is another example, if it plays, yeah, for uh, Face ID on the iPhone. Um, so you know what is Face ID, right? Yes. Uh, so that is so the first time, how can the system recognize that you are you? It cannot, because it never see you. So there is a user interface that get as simple as possible, since this is for the general public, as simple as possible, the information that are needed and will give you feedback if you're doing right or not. And what is this feedback? Look at the video. Well, the setup is the end of the process. Where is the feedback? The green lines around. The green lines around. So when everything is green around and then there are instructions to the next step, and if something is not working, they give you another instruction to follow. And then after that, you can, you can use it. And you can also decide. No. Maybe before, in the screen before, you can also decide not to set up this. You're just avoiding the process. Um, so, in many cases, a suitable user interface is critical to overcome some limitations, some problem of the AI system per se. Um, and so it's fundamental, and that's what I want to convince you today at least, is that it's fundamental to keep people involved in the loop, he said before. Um, and considering people since the beginning of the process. So think about the case of the hospital and the X-ray. The algorithm was, let's say good, was done properly. It worked within parameters. Um, the images were sort of okay. But what was the the most probably significant error that the researcher there make. Wasn't about getting the result checked by an expert. Wasn't there the problem. Yet they discovered they had a problem after doing that. But what was the, the mistake that could have avoid month of work for, or years of work for nothing. Ignoring the human interaction with system. Ignoring human interaction with system is right, but it's also too generic at this the point. Way, the way in which uh, operator use it. The way in which operator use it. So the way in which doctor use it. And how do you know this information? Watching uh, the doctor, people to them. So before starting the data collection, before starting the selection of the algorithm, once you identify the problem, I want to classify this clearly, go there in hospital, talk with doctor, see the practices for what you can, and so you discover that in one hospital you're doing one thing, and in another hospital you're doing a totally different thing. And so if you want your system to be generalizable enough, you need to consider both entry point in your initial data set, et cetera, et cetera, so that your algorithm will work properly in many cases. So not just think that I know how this works or picking some picture from x-ray from one single place or from the internet, but understanding the practices that people have in a specific moment where they want to deploy this. So clearly this was something to deploy in a place. It wasn't something to, to use in an academic setting. 
but it was something that has an impact. Mm? It wasn't the slides about when it's not working, it could be dangerous. Mm? Because if, if they trust the system that could diagnose, make a diagnosis of something that is not a disease or vice versa. Mm? So this is a serious implication. Um, so which are the challenges here uh, and then we try to answer these three questions in this 20 hour how to ensure that people use AI power system uh, with let's say joy and trust rather than the frustration and disappointment like discovering that ChatGPT is not is giving us 12 plus 87 80, 81 results 87 that was disappointing um, how can we design and evaluate a human-centered AI system and how can avoid or minimize, because some problem cannot be avoided at all, problem, failures, ethical issues, etc. in AI system. And we will not focus, I'm telling to her, on explainable AI specifically, uh, but some of these things can be used in explainable AI as well. And not, all, not everything needs to be explained, probably also, we will have some discussion on, on that in the second class. But uh, it surely are, uh, are relevant and um, a topic that intersect with this. Um, so um, if we move one step back and just consider computers and people, um, uh, I, I, put, I take this sentence from a professor in Carnegie Mellon University that said the two hardest problems in computer science are people, uh, convincing computer scientists that the other problem in computer science is people, and off by one error. Um, because actually, again, as we said in the, in the beginning, how many times in the uh, a machine learning course you, you meet people or in any computer engineer or engineering in general course you speak about people and I know that there are people here not from engineering but I'm in this case speaking to, to the others um, how many times you meet people in your algorithm design your system design your evaluation your creation very very rarely and actually is one of the problem if you do something to, to be used, ignoring how people work is, is actually a, a, a problem and, and something that can solve issues. Uh, because, you know, um, is any of you did a course with me in the past? Except Luca. Yes. Which course? Human yeah, same. Uh, no, um, uh, Webplication. Yeah, image processing on computer vision that I don't do anymore. Um, I don't do anymore. Anything else? So if you do it, human interaction, you already have seen this slide. And some of these slides, you, you will see some of this. So, so this is the, if you give developers free reign and say, do whatever you want, and forget about people, this is what they are able to come up with. Do you think this is... I don't want to say usable, I would say reasonable to use, whatever they're doing. If you open an application on the screen and see something like this. Provide a good documentation. Maybe. It's like a 1,000 pages book. Um, it's not. So one, so one, this is actually made on purpose. Uh, was not, it's not real. The other one, unfortunately, it is. Um, and, and it's a mess, so we, we're not going to, to see normal let's say user interface but if we give computer scientists engineer etc free reign and wait they don't forgot they forgot that there are people different from them you can end up doing something like this this is the graphical user interface for a command line tool so a command line tool can have millions of options and you can see in the documentation you have to remember them and you probably end up using five or six of those um, and so this person decided to put all of them in a user interface without a lot of um, too much reasoning. And for this person, probably this was totally understandable because he was used to use this command line tool and this probably was an improvement. But if you look at this, this is actually a mess. 
I don't know how to call anyway. And there's also something wrong, like, I don't know, I can, I can run it with no info, all info, and some info together, for instance. Why not? I don't provide info, but also provide all the info together. And just to make an example, uh, this. And then there is also a, where is? A pro mode. I don't want to know what is in the pro mode. Right, so this is free range, this is an extreme example, but these are results also I'm not thinking about, in this case, user of this, uh, of the system that was something different from the creator of this. Uh, and with that, before going through, through, through this, I promise you a, a break after one hour and we are way after one hour, so let's take a 10 minutes break now and then we will continue with, with this. <laughs>